Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Lore Week. I am your host, Wasabi Almond Dude. These are good. I like these. So, send me money. What, what company is this? Hang on. Uh, it's not going to tell me, is it? I'm not sure who owns them. I mean, it's Blue Diamond, but I'm not sure who owns them. It's always weird, the thing you have, things you have to consider. It's like, who owns them? No, who owns them? No, who owns them? <laughs> All right, we're going to cover some quick news, as is our usual. First news we're going to cover is, as usual, Laura Walker news. So, uh, for those of you not aware, I have completed the raw recording footage of all of the Laura Walker Theater stuff for Final Fantasy IX. As in, I have beaten the game. I have recorded the ending. You know, that's, that's how far we are in raw footage. Now, the next step is the longest and hardest step when it comes to the Lore Walker Theater stuff, and that is the editing and director's notes, which I am currently working on Chapter 7 of. I have been successfully getting at least a little bit of that done every day, because I tried to just sit down and really smash as much of that as I could, and my brains just started melting, so I'm approaching it with a slightly more let's spread this out kind of a thing, especially since I do have other work to do. We are... Uh, I'm still going forward with the Cordens Project. I actually worked on two songs yesterday, which I actually am really happy how they turned out. I'm not going to play them for you because you'd hate them, but, you know, I'd, I'd just like to say that because it's always nice to be appreciated uh, with the work you're doing. All the Cordens songs, of course, will be slowly, bit by bit, uploaded to the website. Website, website, website. Um, my Comcast emote hasn't been confirmed yet. So we don't have a Comcast emote yet. Sorry, guys. Hopefully we'll have that by tomorrow or maybe by someday during today's stream. I don't know. Um, so I suppose I should also tell you this. First of all, we do still have a Voot going on. This is still... Where is it? It's over here somewhere. Is it this way? There it is. We still have the Kingdom Hearts 3 Voot going on. That's for whether or not we will delay the Kingdom Hearts 3 premiere run. Please make sure to weigh in on that if you have not done so already. We do not have the usual spread that we normally do for that, so if you haven't vooted, voot, please. <laughs> it's actually relevant to today's Lower Week topic, strangely enough, that you vote on this. Now, uh, the next thing I want to talk about is we. Will, there's an extremely high chance that we're going to finish the Half-Life lore run probably within the next couple of days. I'd say Tuesday, maybe Wednesday on the absolute outside for finishing the Half-Life lore run. I would be astonished if we take longer than that. I... There are three other lore runs that I'm basically ready to begin, but I only have about a two-week window to do, and the next three lore runs are all kind of long. So I'm going to do a, a couple of feasibility studies to figure out if we can do another lore run without having to interrupt it this month, which is what I want to do. This has been the year of the lore run, after all, and I do want to get basically all of the lore runs done before we get back to our regular schedule. So, uh, I've been looking at that and thinking about that. For those of you curious, the three lore runs that we have that we're basically ready to do are Assassin's Creed, um, Neverwinter Nights, and Witcher 3. Of those, Witcher 3 is the least likely to happen, purely because it's going to be the longest. <laughs> Assassin's Creed will probably be the shortest. Again, I have to do some studies and work and figure out a few specifics. So, and apparently no one has the link, so give me a second. I will pull up the Voot link. Give me just a moment. Which is taking forever to load, just as you do. There you go. Voot link uh, linked. <laughs> <clears throat> um, what else? So, yeah, so at the moment, since Witcher 3 is so unlikely to happen, uh, at least in a two-week period of time, I'm most look likely looking at Assassin's Creed and Neverwinter Nights. With Assassin's Creed probably being the most likely, we'll see. Also, drive safe in Salvo. Now, I think that's it for lore news. <laughs> I guess I should also mention, for those of you not aware, I'm going to be gone the final week of December. I will be in Vegas, winning millions and billions of dollars. No, I'm visiting family, because as I've said many times, a lot of my family lives and retires in Vegas. So that's what's going on with that one. So I'll be going and visiting them for about a week. 
couple other little news tidbits not related to me. First of all, they're pushing forward for a Cowboy Bebop live-action series. I have no idea what I think of that, but I have to admit, of you know, of the popular animes, that's probably one of the more likely ones to go ahead and make a live-action, because, <laughs> I mean, you can't, I mean, Naruto live-action wouldn't work the same way, right? <laughs> Whereas Cowboy Bebop is surprisingly down to earth in its overall presentation. It's basically just, you know, it's, it's Firefly, right? You can do that. So I'm with that. I didn't like Cowboy Bebop personally. I, you know me. I have terrible, awful opinions. But I just thought I'd share it because I know several of my viewers do care about Cowboy Bebop and are probably curious about where that's going. The United States and Australia are both looking into loot boxes and the legality of them. Now, you might be saying, oh, well, that's a topic by itself. Not really. Oh, yeah, Daredevil got canceled. I'm sorry. That sucks, but all I'm going to say is called it. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you guys remember this, but when I did a lore week talking about why, specifically, that it was that Netflix was shutting down so many different shows and why they were inclined. Like, I, I mentioned the phrase that the other shows aren't doing well enough to really be st safe, and several of my viewers took umbrage with that remark, saying it was doing really, really well. Well, Daredevil got cancelled. Again, this isn't really about the success or failure of the shows. This has to do with the relationship between Netflix and Disney. I already talked about that, so I don't have anything new to add to that. I have Video Game Awards over this week. Make sure not to watch those. I'm kidding. Watch whatever you want to. <laughs> I usually mentally think of the, uh, the Video Game Awards show pretty much in the same... Uh, no, I don't think I did, Spirit of Memory. Uh, which channel did you put that in? Um, I'd, I'd, I'd usually think of the Video Game Awards show in about the same spirit or mentality that I do the Oscars. You know, I'll, I'll kind of glance and pay attention, but that's about it, because... <laughs> we all know that Red Dead Redemption 2 is going to win everything, of course. And Javan is awesome. Thank you very, very much, Javan. As ever, I do much appreciate your continued support, especially since you hate me in my opinions. No, it's great. It's actually legitimately great to have people who dis disagree with me and can talk about it. It's a treat in life to have that. That's not a joke. <laughs> it's, it's a wonderful thing to have people who disagree with you and are willing to just sit and chat about it. Marvel. That's probably why I don't have it, Spirit of Memory, because I've had Marvel spoilers uh, muted recently. I'll, I'll go look at it later. Um... So, uh, someone just asked, will I be doing my own Game of the Year thing? Depends on if I have time. I want to. I legitimately want to sit down and say, okay, so here's my, you know, Game of the Year thing. Whatever you want to call that. And I also want to do a Voot for your guys' Game of the Year stuff. And I've, I've actually already got categories written up. I think I've already mentioned these. Right here, yeah. Best game, uh, best, biggest disappointment, biggest... You know, pleasant surprise, most emotionally connecting, best new meme, best platforming, most anticipated, most fun, best ground level storytelling. Those are the categories I have right now. So I very much will be... I would like to go ahead and open a vote and do that with you guys. Probably do a stream for that, because to be completely honest, I don't think I have time to do the more editing heavy thing that would be necessary to actually throw together footage and all that fun stuff. So, <laughs> time, the, my eternal enemy. Anywho, <clears throat> I was going to mention something else, um, and I don't remember what. Loot box thing. Oh, <clears throat> right, right. The loot box thing. So, uh, why it is that I don't think the loot box thing and the loot box investigation is a particularly big deal. Because... No, there's no fear. Um, <laughs> well, that's the idea, Hazardous. That's exactly the idea. In fact, I believe I did that last year. It doesn't... I mean, okay. Whether... <laughs> there's no way to talk about government oversight without drifting into the controversial territory. All I'm going to say is that some people think more gover government oversight is a good thing, and some people think less government oversight is a good thing. And 
I'm personally of the opinion that adding increased regulation is not necessarily a good thing, and that's really all this loot box regulation thing is a, is a, is a thing. We'll see what they actually do with it. If it was actually regulation and not a bunch of old people who have no idea what they're talking about, then I'd be more in favor of it, but politics. Anywho. Oh, trust me, Red Dead Redemption 2 will probably win Game of the Year. It, it's that or God of War. Those are the two that are probably going to win it. I, I almost guarantee that. <laughs> um, Red Dead Redemption 2 will probably win because it's a Rockstar game. Looking at my notes here. So there's Daredevil, loot boxes, Cowboy Bebop. Uh, yeah, I guess that's basically it. I agree, Jobin, for once. But what can we do about it? Oh, yeah, that's right. Nothing. Which brings me to my point. Now, I was hoping to make this point in a slightly different way. I actually do have a topic, one topic for today. Just one. I mean, I could talk about, you know, the FTC stuff, but like I said, there's nothing to talk about there. It, I've already said everything I have, there is to say about that. We'll see once the results of that go through. No, what really matters right now is Fallout 76 and Bethesda. <sighs> Anybody who's been paying attention to me knows that I've actually been basically trying to avoid talking about Fallout 76 on my show. Mostly because... God, it's just such a mess. And I haven't played the game. And you guys know me. Most of my attention usually tends to be on the game. Let me give you two examples of what I'm talking about really quick. There were two games that have come out which I really, really liked. Uh, those games were Deus Ex Mankind Divided and... Uh, I forget the full title, but Shadow of War. The, the sequel to Shadow of Mordor. Both of those games were excellent in my opinion. Er, eh, great, in my opinion. And games that I absolutely love playing through. And yet, you know, controversy, loot boxes, microtransactions, blah, blah, blah. So... No, that's actually not true, absurdity. Do not try to say that. I actually get irritated when people accuse me of that. What I am determined to do is to give it a fair shake, despite pushback against it. But of course, I have not actually played the game, because to be completely blunt, I don't have time. And I really don't have the interest right now. I got lower ones to do. So, so we're not talking about the game. Because I haven't played the game. So the game's out the window, right? Now, what I'm going to talk about is the everything other than the game. Because, let's see, so we've got the canvas bag problem, the atom points problem, the material concept, the refusing of refunds, and the double investigation. These are the main things that have happened just this week. <laughs> so, just to cover these really quick on the off chance that you haven't actually heard of what I'm talking about... First and foremost, we have the canvas bag problem, where the people who plopped down $200 in order to get the Super Mega Doom D Edition, or whatever the hell they call it. Yeah, I know, right? Exactly, Javin, exactly. Um, the, uh, the Super Doom Edition, I don't remember what it's called, and I don't care, would also get a canvas bag, which they showed some pictures of, and there's some you know, product placement and all that fun stuff. Now, prior to the... This is actually very important. Prior to the game coming out, uh, some people actually did get canvas bags. Now, they're not the exact same canvas bags as the ones you were supposed to get from the $200 edition, but they were nice canvas bags, you know, actually decently made. The ones we actually got were cheapo $5 nylon pieces of crap. I have seen plenty of pictures of the nylon canvas bags. They look awful. They're the kind of things that I could literally walk down to my frickin' Walmart and buy for $5. I know this for total certainty because I've actually done this before under very unique circumstances when I didn't own a car but I had enough money to buy a bag to carry my groceries home in. That actually happened. So, <laughs> I granted that was a few years ago, but it was, that did actually happen. I still have that bag, actually. So, that's... Pathetic is the nicest and simplest way to put that. But it's also bad on two separate levels. The first is the obvious level, what I like to call the real-life perspective. Because from the reality perspective, sorry, reality, not real life. The reality's perspective, the people who plucked down, I'm going to say this one more time, $200 in order to get this game, got a bag. 
That's the reality perspective. Don't really need to say any more there, right? But the other perspective is the fact that there is some legitimate grievances here on the uh, potential, excuse me, potential legitimate grievances on a legal level thanks to the possibility of false advertising. Now, false advertising is a actually a much grayer topic than some people tend to think it is. It's not a guaranteed thing. I mean, I, for example, you cannot go right now to... <sighs> My favorite example is uh, burgers. You can't go to a burger joint and complain that your Whopper doesn't look like the Whopper in the picture and that that's false advertising. That's not a thing you can do. Um, even though it technically, arguably, is false advertising because I guarantee you that burger you just got is not the same as the burger on that thing. Because anybody who's actually studied television or advertising knows that thing on that picture is not a burger. That is a construction of many different materials to look exactly like a really nice made burger. Right? I mean, there's tons of examples of this. Actually, probably my personal favorite example isn't burgers, it's actually beer. You know, you, you put some uh, uh, dishwashing soap into the beer bottle and then you pour the beer in and it fizzes up, you know. Anyways, <clears throat> I'm sure some of you know what I'm talking about at the very least. So that's not legally false advertising, even though it's arguably reality false advertising. And I only say this to establish the point that this might qualify as actually still being legally false advertising, even though this canvas bag is definitely false advertising in a reality's perspective. Make sense? So even legally speaking, this is something that is, they're being investigated for uh, twice, actually. Once for the false advertising thing, which I just mentioned, and once for the next problem, which is the lack of refund, because the way they've been approaching the refund policy is so strange, I actually don't know how to explain it. <laughs> I really... Is there a Jofro? I don't think I've seen that film. Oh, I, I do it all the time, Olyphius. I love the name, by the way. So, um... <laughs> Damn it, um... I'm sorry, I'll never forget the first fake burger I ever saw. I was actually quite young. I was just getting into TV production, so this is, like, pre-high school. Thank you. I, I, I'm glad someone noticed the snow. And, uh, they were actually constructing the burger and out of, like, cardboard and wood. And, like, they, they, they were spraying, uh... Teflon all over the bun to make sure it stayed just but I'm just staring at this like oh my god that's horrible anyways um well thank you very much Majdi but um I I, I, I I in no way mean this as an insult but that will never happen Majdi uh, in fact I actually put an entire section in my Q&A on my website to explain why I don't have gameplay footage in the back of my ruminations Long story short, I, there are many reasons why that's not happening and will probably never happen. Not unless I win the lottery. <laughs> so, or start making, like, triple what I currently do. <sighs> Anyways. So, as usual, um, so, yeah, getting back to the point. The refunds problem. So, some people applied for refunds and got refunds. And then some people applied for refunds and didn't get refunds. And then some people applied for refunds and were like, hey... Oh, you, oh, okay, we're going to get a refund later? Okay, there's something wrong. Okay, no problem. Go ahead and look into it. Oh, now you're not giving me a refund. But you said you'd look... Okay. And then in some cases, they're actually just auto-rejecting refunds. Now, i got to stress the way I'm saying this because there's not concrete information on this point, and most of this is coming from stories from people, which may be exaggerated or outright fabrications. But nevertheless, there's enough of a, a net being tossed here that I think it's fairly easy to say that there are refund issues happening because that's the second thing they're being investigated for. Now, when I say investigated for, you're probably thinking, aha, the cops. No, legal firm. It's a legal firm whose name I didn't bother to write down because screw them. In, uh, based in Washington, D.C., who is investigating them, first for false advertising, and second for basically refusing to proffer proper refunds. Proffer proper refunds. That's the worst sentence I've ever constructed. <laughs> the mere fact that an actual law firm is looking into this means that they believe that there is enough smoke to constitute an investigation. That, to me, means more than I think... Uh, is enough evidence to indicate that there is an actual refund problem going on. I'll have to look it up later, Jofro. Thank you. Now... <laughs> I'm going to take a quick segue. 
obviously no one watching this right now yeah. no one watching this right now actually is has, was alive when refunds weren't a thing but it always amuses me a little bit that refunds has become such a normal aspect of our economy when that's a relatively new concept, if you look at it from a historical perspective. The fact that I could buy a product right now and find out that it wasn't what I wanted and then take it back to the store I bought it from and say, I'm sorry, this isn't what I wanted. Can I get my money back? And there's an extremely high chance I'll get my money back is a relatively, like within the last century or so, relatively new concept. It's just interesting to me to think about that because it has so quickly ingrained itself into the minds of the, of the consumer. And understandably so. I mean, from a purely reality perspective, the very concept of a refund, basically, yes, it's boring. Uh, the very concept of a refund is really logical from reality's perspective. If I walk up and I say, oh, man, I want that, and I buy it, and I'm like, oh, this is, this is terrible. This isn't what I wanted at all. I'm sorry, could I get my money back? That just seems so logical from the perspective of the individual, right? And I think that's one of the reasons why basically mandatory refunds, like the fact that people insist, nay, demand on getting refunds when necessary, has become such a normal thing of our culture. Now, I am, of course, speaking within, within regards to the United States, which is where I live, but you get it, right? Yeah, there was the guy who destroyed... You know, that guy gets no credit. The guy who messed up that GameStop, that guy should probably be arrested. I mean, that's me saying that. <laughs> that guy was not cool. As ever, express your outrage, express your upset, do something about it. Don't be a dick. <laughs> it's always rule one. Don't be a dick. Anyways. <sighs> yeah, what Gary says has actually happened to me, too. There's been plenty of times... Um, there's been plenty of times when I have actually ordered something from Amazon and been like, oh crap, this isn't what I wanted at all. I'm sorry, I got a refund on this. And Amazon, of course, has been cool. <sighs> Anyways. <laughs> yeah, rule one! Rule one! Um, so, getting back to my point. Again, at least here in the States, the very idea of getting a refund for something you didn't want or something you didn't expect or whatever is kind of normal. It's pretty much the norm, right? And that's at least part of why th their insistence on being... Um, I want to use a very specific word here because it's the word my mom used to use. They're being weasels about the way they're approaching this refund thing. Some people are probably not getting refunds because of of different uh, regions. Some people are probably not getting refunds because, you know, they, they're not sure of the legality of the situation. But the simple, flat reality, the harsh reality, is that refunds, and this is a, there's a near, there's a near total truth, at least here in the United States, refunds equal customer trust. I am offering you a refund. I don't know, I've done this on my very own show. I'm, I'm offering you a refund because you and your trust and your continued interest is more important to me than the 30 bucks or whatever that I got out of you, right? Just flat. And that, well, I'm building to a point here. <sighs> so then, to continue, there's the fact that, so they got these, they didn't get these canvas bags and they're like, oh, yeah, no, no worries, listen. We'll make it up to you. We're, we're t sorry we didn't communicate properly. I love that one. We'll give you 500 atom points, which for those of you curious is about five bucks. I probably don't need to explain how ludicrous and stupid that is, but just to make my point very, very clearly, 500 atom points is not enough to buy the in-game canvas bag. The digital one. <sighs> yeah, exactly, Gary. Oh, 
Oh my god, they've been they've been tossing out so many different excuses. It's more more difficult to make these canvas bags than we anticipated. We were running out of material to make the proper canvas bags, and we think this should be acceptable compensation for this. And just oh my god, let me wrap this up a little bit. Because believe it or not, my actual point I want to talk about is only partially related to Bethesda and Fallout 76. Because this is all just a mess, right? This is all just... What are you doing? Um, what they've been doing is screwing up at almost every level. <laughs> From... Let's just go through this just real quick, okay? From a two-day stream leading to a weird announcement to offering pre-orders before telling what the game is to spending a decent amount of time at E3 discussing the game without actually mentioning it properly and hyping it up in the wrong way, to misleading interviews which actually contradict each other, to an open beta which was just a gargantuan mess, to an incredibly buggy launch. I mean, whatever we could say about the actual quality of the game, the launch was amazingly buggy. To <laughs> the fact that they're offering this $200... I, I'm going to keep emphasizing that point because it's still insane. $200 bonus edition and not fully, fully, fulfilling on basically what they're offering in the $200. To the, the lack of refunds. To the net lack of the canvas bag. To the fact that they're uh, just being dicks on, on almost every response they have. All of this... Makes no sense... Until you sit and think of it from a completely different perspective. And this is my actual point. I'm going to show you guys an image. But I, I want to lead up to this, okay? So I have a question for you. And I know this is going to sound weird. But how many of you guys have played World of Warcraft? Just a quick question. Okay, just making sure we're good there. Now, I'm using WoW as the example. I, actually, FF14 is a better example, but the census was down this morning, so I couldn't grab an image for it. And I want to show you factual data, because that's part of the point. So... WoW was an FTP. <laughs> oh, you mean the first 20 levels, right? The demo thing. So, World of Warcraft, uh, there's a bunch of races, right? You know, humans, uh, night elves, gnomes, dwarves... Tarans, Oryx, Trolls, uh, Forsaken, and I think that's it at Vanilla, right? All those races have been around since Vanilla. Then we move forward and we get to BC, which we, they added the Draenei and the Blood Elves. In Wrath, they added a new class. In Cataclysm, they added the Goblins of the Worgen. In Pandaria, they added the Pandarans. In Warlords, they added nothing. And in Legion, they added the Demon Hunters. Now, I want you to think about something. Okay. How much time and effort do you think it takes to make a demon hunter? To design a new class from word go? Or to uh, design a new race? Think about all of the, the, the actual art design. Think about the actual uh, mesh, excuse me, skeleton rendering and animation. And then the actual, uh, I guess mesh is the right word. I feel like that's the wrong word. Mesh that's put on that. And then the texture that's on that. And then polishing it and then making sure every single armor in the game fits for that and it's just an absolutely gargantuan oh yeah I missed all some added monks I forgot about that um, emotes yep voice acting tons of voice acting tons and tons and tons of work right now before I do or say anything else what do you think about like any of the new stuff they added right Let me know what he thinks about it. Thank you very, very much, Snicker friend. Oh, by the way, Javin, you never put it towards anything. Would you like to put that donation, that subscription, towards anything, Snicker friend? One, three, one, three. Thank you very much. But do you think it was worth it, basically? Do you think it was the Demon Hunter was worthwhile? Now, I'm only going to give the personal perspective here because I only know, uh, I want to say five people, counting myself, who've actually played Demon Hunters, but all of us will say, yeah, it's amazing! <laughs> Demon Hunter is freaking awesome. You got it, sticker friend. Three, three, three. Profile. 
done and done. Or, you know, the Pandarans. Oh my god, the Pandarans were so well designed and so fun. And the Monks. God, Monk is still one of my favorite classes in that game. So here's the image. Now this is a recent census. In fact, this is a census that happened, I pulled, today. Now the class balance, that's pretty average. Although you'll notice Monk is by far the least. But what I really want to pull your attention to is the race balance. Do you see that? It's the, it's the top thing. You can see very clearly, Blood Elves are by far the most played race, followed by humans, followed by Night Elves. Now, what does this have to do with anything? Well, see, the problem is, this right here is what people have at their disposal to decide what to do when it comes to the people who actually make decisions when it comes to these games. And this is indicative of something that I have noticed more and more the older I get. That what... So, let me try to explain this differently. Let's assume for a moment... I'm going to use an analogy. I'm, I'm, I'm two analogies in. We're analogy exceptioning here. So let's assume that you go to a rock concert as a performer. And you're like... And nobody in the, in the audience is like... It's like a dead audience, like three or four people say woo, right? So you so you would probably leave that with the impression, with the mentality of, well, that was a failure. Nobody liked that. Oh my god, what did I do wrong? But now assume for a moment that you were to actually to somehow poll all those people for which ones had a good time. And let's say a huge number of them said, yes, that was a great conference, a, a concert. I really enjoyed it. This is a, again, I've been seeing this more and more and more in life, the, the, the older I get. It's one of the reasons why I try to make sure you guys voot, rather than just presuming based on imp impressions. Because it's tended to be impressions versus reality, is, is what I'm trying to get at. That's actually the real topic here. Because I could say that Demon Hunters are awesome. And demons are, I could say that Pandarans are awesome. I could say that being able to play as... You know, the goblin is great, or a worgen is great, but this number does not agree with that. This is the actual reality, not the impression. This says people like to play blood elves, probably because they're horde and want to have a decent-looking character, humans, because they've probably been playing since forever, and night elves, because, duh, elves, elves, and humans. The next highest on this list is orc, which is way down there, less than half of the night elves. You get the point? So this is the reality that the actual developers... <laughs> oh god, you're right. Worgen isn't even on the list. Jesus Christ. This is the reality, the actual uh, data that is being made available to the actual developers and most importantly, to the money people. They're the ones who are actually making decisions based on this data. You with me? So... You can kind of see how perspectives can skew, right? Now, I use that as an example because I can actually pull up that factual data. I just pulled that today. <laughs> However, what I'm trying to get at is this is now theory, okay? We're getting into the realm of speculation. <sighs> how many of you look at... How many of you look at bundles on mobile... I don't actually think I have any mobile games on here. Oh, no, this one. My, my sis made me download this one, like, just Friday or whatever. I'm sure this will have some stupid bundle on it. Santa went to school, high school with Julius Caesar. Sure. No. All right, where's the store? There we go. There we go. So, in this game, this, mo this stupid mobile game... I can drop $100 in order to get 3,800 dice and 2,000 gems. I don't even know what that means. 100 bucks for, for microtransactions on a mobile game. How many of you would ever do that? I'll wait. <laughs> hundred bucks. I'll 
to admit that I would never do that. hundred bucks. I mean, I'm sorry, maybe I'm just too used to the mentality of not having a lot of money in my life, but a hundred dollars is an enormous amount of money to me. <laughs> like, if you came out with an FF6 expansion pack, I probably wouldn't pay a hundred bucks for that. So I'm seeing a whole lot of no's in chat. Some some maybes, understandable, but a whole lot of no's. That's because we don't matter for those kind of transactions. I actually have talked about this before. We are not the target audience for that. They don't give a crap about us. They give a crap about the people who will pay $100 for that kind of crap. Who either have money from their family, regardless of age, who have way too much money to burn and nothing else to burn it on, which that is a type of person, or people who have no self-control. That is their target audience. And they specifically are like, hey, trying to rip as much money as those The concept is usually referred to as whale, which is funny because for those of you aware of the actual origins of the term whale, it is an insult. The term whales is an insult. <laughs> Even before it became a thing for this stuff. So, this kind of gets back to what I was talking about, because to, to parallel this to the WoW picture I was just showing, you might look at, you might pull a census of gamers, or people who play games, like I just kind of very loosely and very unofficially did in chat, and say, well, that $100 thing isn't even worth having. Like, no one's going to buy that. They might maybe buy that. But then, you look at the actual census data the actual data of how much money is going through, and you see that, oh, people are willing to spend that much money on it. Go forward! Right? Now, this, there's actually a, a related topic that I don't want to tangent onto about the nature of the market. Let's just leave that up to the side for the moment. Um, yeah, as, as Sower Cookie points out, also, if I just dropped 100 bucks, I'm still not the whale. Dropping multiple hundreds of ducks of bucks is, is the whale. But anyways, I'm getting off topic. The way this relates personally is because the census data does support the fact that people drop way too much money on these kind of transactions. Now I'm going to bring this back to Fallout 76 seamlessly. Those canvas bag things were $200. And that's why I kept emphasizing that point earlier. So despite everything, despite one of the worst marketing campaigns I've seen in recent history, this is right up there with that frickin' BMX naked women thing from several years ago. <laughs> one of the worst marketing campaigns ever. There are still people who plopped down $200 in order to get these canvas bag things. <laughs> the census data supports the idea of basically what they're doing. Now, and yeah, I know they weren't. They obviously weren't after the canvas bags, but my point remains. $200 for Fallout 76. Do I even need to add anything to that? <sighs> Interestingly enough, Fallout 76 almost assuredly made money, like net profited. I, I don't know, because we don't have their quarterly returns, and they don't necessarily have to release all that information to the public. And we won't, so we won't find out about that for uh, two months? Something like that. <laughs> Yeah, no, sorry, Hazardous, you're not going to sell me on this. Because, again, the idea of... So, let me once again do a parallel. If FF6 came out with some super edition that had, like, a statue or whatever, I still wouldn't buy, pay 200 bucks for that. Because I'm not the target audience for that. But there is a target audience for that, as the data shows. Now, what does this all have to do with how Bethesda is be just being insane and stupid about all of this? This is heavily getting into theory. This is, we're, we're fully in the realm of speculation now. Hi, Lorimbus. But in the realm of speculation, it is my opinion, and I, I was actually talking about this with Gary in, in Discord, so he's, he's probably going to hear me repeating some of his own points and my own points back to him here. It is my opinion that what's actually happening here is that the... Because this isn't... Let's actually take a step back. Because this isn't just exclusive to Bethesda. 
How many companies this year have been hilariously out of touch with their market? We had the situation with Bethesda. We had the situation with Amazon, somewhat recently. We've had the situation with Ubisoft. I spent an entire lore week talking about that one. And uh, there's another one. Oh, yes, Blizzard. Yes, how can I forget? And then there's Blizzard. <laughs> oh, yeah, and I suppose there's also EA with Battlefields. That's five companies that have all basically made the same mistake this year. Every one of them has done the same thing and uh, has, has accomplished the same problem, basically. Yeah, don't you have a phone? You guys have phones, right? I'm sorry, I just found something amusing. I have got, I've got like my Switch thing, my PS4 controller, uh, right next to each other. My phone's over here. <laughs> Anyways. Very minor amusement. Moving on. See, the problem is, in the realm of speculation, it is my belief that the data supports the idea of what they're doing. That the census data is such that they look at the things, the people actually making decisions, what I usually refer to as the money people, are looking at these things and saying, well, mobile games are selling like crazy and there's an obvious demand based on this census data for a Diablo mobile game. So, we're going to go ahead and have that be the tail runner at, at BlizzCon and people are going to be awesomed by being able to play Diablo on the phone. And instead, we got this. Thank you very, very much, Jimmy Bailey. As ever, much appreciate that continued support. What would you like to put that towards? <sighs> Again, pure speculation. Pure speculation, but I really feel like a lot of these decisions aren't so much as them being out of touch with their audience as being, dis being completely in touch with the census and not with us. Now, the count says, are they wrong with going for the census data? I suppose that depends on what you define as your goal. Here's, here's your loot box. <laughs> yes, this is all just wasabi almonds. There you go. <laughs> what the hell, Gary? <sighs> no, that's, again, that's not a whale. Please, please don't be a whale to me. Please, I don't want to encourage that as a concept. I've also, I've also got two other loot boxes here. Uh, these are my replacement headphones for when I throw these away because of the whole ear thing. You get those too! And some Dequil! Because <laughs> I've been talking a lot lately. <sighs> God damn it, Gary. Thank you. <sighs> I'd ask what you want to put that towards, but I know you and you don't actually watch my stream, so I have no idea what you'd be interested in me putting that towards. <laughs> Anyways, I'm sorry. Let's, let's get to the real core point here. Because, and I don't want to sound depressing, but this might be a situation with no solution. This might be a circumstance in which there is no good way for things to move forward for us. For the actual... I'm just going to say this as bluntly as I can. For the actual gamers. I know that sounds elitist, but what I mean by that to be as completely blunt as I can, is there is a difference, in my opinion, between the market of people who sit down and want to, you know, play, I don't know, a video game, Red Dead Redemption 2, right? There's a difference between someone who wants to do this, as far as a market, and someone who wants to do this. Now, there's obviously bleed over. And no, no judgment if you enjoy mobile games. No judgment, really. 
But market-wise, the people that these census that this census data is supporting is a different group than the people who want to do that. Okay. Problem is, <laughs> if we don't pay for this stuff, it doesn't matter because someone else does, right? Because we already don't pay for this crap. We already don't drop $100 for a bag of virtual dice in a game that uh, literally, by the way, I was just tapping there. That is not an exaggeration. The game I was showcasing earlier, you just tap to roll the dice and then the piece moves forward. Then you tap to roll the dice and then the piece moves forward. And that's it. That is not us. We are not that market. So is it wrong for the companies? Oh, you've got it, Gary. I really want to play both of those games, so you got it. I'm even going to put you in the credits. Because <laughs> I'm insane. Two of my friends are the only people who've donated towards the Breath of the Wild DLC. Anyways. <clears throat> Anyways, getting back to the point, are they wrong for boying that way? Well, I mean, arguably, no. That's what makes the money. And a company, really, at the end of, at the, end of the day, a company is there to make money. Now, that is also not the only thing a company is there to do. And I do think that if you focus too much on just making money and nothing else, that that's a problem. And I can say that very definitively because I pay attention to history. There are so, so, so many examples, hundreds of examples, just within the last two centuries, of economic runaway, which is when your economy just gets way out of hand and goes way too far in a given direction, and it turns out badly, universally. In fact, in many cases, the specific people who are getting super rich because of their excess greed and avarice then lose everything as a consequence of it. So it's even when it comes to the individual perspective of the person who wants, I want more money, it still tends to tend out, turn out badly for them. <sighs> so, it is a valid question. Should they be focusing on this? Now, as you might imagine, uh, I would go ahead and say that moderation, and I know, I know this is going to sound so stupid coming from me, but moderation is probably the key. Rather than focusing solely on one thing, solely on census data, spread it out a little bit. Because there's one little niggling detail that I didn't mention about census data, and that's that census data is not always factually true. This is why I wanted to show you the FF14 census data as well, to make my final point here. So you're going to have to imagine it here Please trust me, it is a real thing, I swear. I just, it's not loading right now, so I can't pull it up. <sighs> so, um, if you look at the FF14 census data yesterday, which is when I last actually looked at it, you would see that the most played class by an overwhelming detail, uh, by an overwhelming amount, is the Paladin. Whereas the new races and the new, that's also true, Hazards, the new races and the new uh, classes are by far the least played. Uh, just If you just Google FF14 Census, which is what I've been doing, as it's actually called FF14Census.com, it's still not loading. <laughs> so, whatever. Anyways, FF14Census.com. There you go. Bam. Um, if this is actually loading for you, which it is not for me, <laughs> You would find that the the new race, which I can't even think of the name of, is the least played by far. Humans are actually, Hewer, I want to say, is the most played by far, and Paladins are the most played by far. Ah, see, Valvedrix actually touches on exactly my point. Because the reason that humans and Paladins, this is almost 100% guaranteed, but I'm only going to say 97% certain here. The reason that those are so high and so played is because they're bots. And this leads to the problem with census data. Now, I have spoken in favor of census data. I have spoken in favor of the idea of being able to pull real factual information because it is a valuable tool, like this voot I have up here, right? But there's a problem between... <sighs> Too many people seem to think that all you need is a census and that that gives you the truth. That's not how that works. <laughs> Life is just a little bit more complicated than that. So... And I kind of actually talked about this earlier when I was showcasing this. Why is it 
Blood Elves, Humans, and Night Elves are the most popular races. Well, we actually know why. In fact, there's three reasons why. And I actually already mentioned them if you're paying attention, but to go through these really quick. Reason number one, bots. Reason number two, people who've been playing for a long time and don't feel like changing their class. And reason number three, elves. Like it or not, elves are an extremely popular thing to play on. This is a, a near-universal fact in gaming. And so the fact that the Blood Elves are super popular for the Horde, and the Night Elves are super popular for the Alliance, makes perfect sense. Right? So we can glean some actual data from this, but only if you interpret it. And that's the key. It's not enough to grab a bunch of data and say, okay, that. You have to grab it, you have to interpret it, you have to work with it, you have to understand why. What is not enough? You must understand why. Otherwise, you're literally working with, with a fallacy, with incorrect data. And that is my final point. I think that is just, again, pure speculation, but I think that Bethesda and EA and Blizzard and uh, Amazon and I can't remember the other, Ubisoft are all looking at census data wrong. I also think they're doing one other problem. And that problem is they're, they're putting too much into one bag. <laughs> Damn it, Javan. Okay, sure, you got it. Uh, Atelier. I'm just going to type Atelier. I don't feel like typing that whole thing out. Thank you, Javan. Do I think they'll correct it in the long term? Historically speaking, that's not what happens. Historically speaking, a company will continue to be wrong, and basically seesaw effect happens until it gets more and more wrong and more and more wrong, and then the company dives, and then the properties get handed out. Now, again... This has nothing to do with the quality of Fallout 76 itself, which, as I stated, I haven't even played! And thank you very, very much. Uh, I never remember if it's Yin the Reaper or Yin the Reaper. They're both cool names. Uh, five towards Zelda lore run. You got it. Thank you very, very much. And so then, they're, 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 it's distributed. Their, their rights and IPs and personnel are distributed, and then it, the cycle repeats with another company. This has been happening for literally centuries. This is not new. <sighs> Sorry. Moving on. Oh, Square has gotcha games. Hang on, let's see how much money I can spend on a Square game really quick, because I got two on my phone right now. But I'm sorry, in case I didn't make this point as clearly as I possibly can... If you want to put money into mobile gaming or gotcha gaming or stuff that makes money, fine. Just don't put everything into that. Just don't focus on it to the point where you release Diablo Immortal at BlizzCon. Just don't focus on it to the point where you are releasing a game that is actually getting you possibly sued twice because of how badly you've handled this whole thing. Okay, here we go. So... Okay, so the most money I could spend... Oh, God. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very, very much for... Who is that? Eliphius! Thank you very, very much for the sub. As ever, much appreciated. What would you like to put that towards? Um, so I could spend $100 on Kingdom Hearts Unchained, or whatever the hell it's called now, right now, for jewels, which has a... Ch which I can buy jewel packs which have a chance to give me the medals I need. That sounds a lot like a loot box to me. It's everything on the website, on the left side of the website, Olyphius. Let's pull it Opera Omnia, shall we? Which is the other one I play. Play. I haven't actually played either of these games seriously in a while. Yeah, exactly, a boring. Hey, Zeiss. Sorry, it's taking a while to load. Still loading. Yes, I know. Okay, so let's go to the store here. I actually don't know where the store is. I've never paid money on this game, and I never will. But yeah, here it is. Sale. Okay. That's 
Okay, so I can spend... What's the most I can spend on this one? Looks like $75 is the most I could spend on this one for gems. Gems get you draws, which have a chance to include weapons. Uh, low quality, like, you know, it's, it's the usual thing, right? Star 1, Star 2, Star 3, Star 4, Star 5 weapons uh, for your characters to equip. Sounds a lot like loot boxes to me. Anyways. <sighs> Anyways. You got it, Olympias. Tech Geek. Now... I don't have anything else to add to Bethesda, because this just, it, again, I think that Bethesda looked at the situation and said this should be fine. Like, I, I really legitimately believe that they were looking at the census data. Again, this is speculation, but I think they were looking at the census data wrong, or looking at the census data too much, or both, and decided that everything they're doing is fine. Everything they've been doing, if you actually sit back and think about it, is almost a one-to-one -one from typical corporate policy, the textbook. A lot of what they've been responding is the textbook responses to how you're supposed to respond to customer service. Problem is, in my experience, I don't have anything to say about that, Micromono. Um, in my experience, if the text box, the textbook for customer service is what you should use as a baseline, actually using it word to word almost universally results in people just being pissed at you. I don't even know what else to add to this. Oh yeah, this is probably a good time to mention that there's actually a third lawsuit which the rumblings have started about Bethesda on this one. This would be a... Uh... Oh god, I can't think of the proper term. It's when a lot of people sue an individual or a company. There's a term for that. Well, um... Max time, THQ is my answer to that. Class action, thank you. Class action lawsuit. <laughs> I can't think of the damn name. Um, so yeah, there's a class action lawsuit which is slowly getting started. In addition to the investigation for the refund issue. In addition to the investigation for the false advertising issue. I already said that, Leo Tamer. It's dumb and stupid. <laughs> Uh, yeah! This... Now, here's a question. Legit question, okay, guys? No, I am not roaring. I'll be busy. I'll be working. Let's assume scenarios, okay? Because we don't know what's going to happen. Let's just all confess that. And I'm not saying this is what I think is going to happen. Because that's not the point. What I'm curious about is what you would prefer. Would you prefer it if Bethesda basically financially crashes and burns over this? Now, to, to make this very clear, would you prefer if Bethesda shuts down, loses their IPs, there's no Starfield, there's no Elder Scrolls VI, there's no Elder Scrolls Blades, which should have come out by now already, and their IPs are dissected and tossed out in the usual bankruptcy courts in, in order to basically stop these kind of practices and issues, and... Again, theoretical. Let's assume that if Bethesda did this, the other companies would pull back a bit. That they would be like, whoa, okay, we don't want that to happen to us. So, would you be willing to, let's put this as bluntly as we can, sacrifice Bethesda and their future games in exchange for other companies pulling back on the reins? Or, would you rather Bethesda continue to do the bullcrap that they've been doing all year in exchange for the fact that we might someday get Starfield and Elder Scrolls Six? I know, Takoida, but that's not the point of the question. We're not talking reality. I, as I just said, THQ. Let's be clear, the odds that Bethesda will be significantly hit by this. 
Tacoina doesn't like when I ask theoretical questions. I've never understood that. Um, yeah, we've only been live for about an hour. Got a phone. Uh, so yeah, um, the point of the question is, you as an individual, what would you rather have? Would you rather take a loss for the possibility of a greater gain, or take a different loss in, in, in response for a different greater gain? That's really what the question is asking. Because let's be honest, neither of these things are going to happen. If Bethesda actually does get shut down over this, which is a possibility, because three, if all three of these lawsuits succeed all at once, that is incredibly damaging to a company, even one as gargantuan as Bethesda. So this could actually cause some significant large-scale financial damage to Bethesda, which would then... Catches, that probably wouldn't mean anything to anyone else. So it would just be Bethesda going down. It is also possible that they'll just move on with absolutely no change whatsoever in the status quo, and then they'll go ahead and make Starfield, and it'll be crap. Then they'll make Elder Scrolls Six, and it'll be crap. The, I have heard those rumors are boring, but I was not able to confirm or deny those, so I'm, that's why I didn't even mention them. Yeah, I've always had the opinion that one of the biggest problems with corporate America, at least, is that the people in charge don't actually care about their companies just themselves, but that's another topic. That is actually a possibility, Takoida. Legitimate possibility. I have no idea orcs are best. I really don't. Oh yeah, by the way, for those of you not aware, Bioware is announcing something this month, and Obsidian's announcing something this week, this Friday, I want to say. We'll probably talk about that next week. When was the last great Bethesda game? Give me a moment, I'll answer that question. My opinion, of course. And I'm going to get some flack for this opinion. 2008. That's my opinion on that. Not Bethesda published. That would be Doom. No, Oblivion was 2006. <laughs> I am referring to Fallout 3. And I'm going to get some flack for that opinion, and I don't care. <laughs> I have said many times that I legitimately like Fallout 3, especially with the DLCs. And I... I've never really changed my opinion on that. However, a lot of people are going to give different answers to that because a lot of people think Skyrim was great, which is fine. That's a lot more recent. Um, that would have been seven years ago, 2011. Um, plenty of people think that Fallout 4 was great, which was, what, three years ago at this point? And then, of course, plenty of people think Oblivion was great, including me. That was 2006. I'm not sure when Morrowind came out. We have to go back to Morrowind. We're in a sad state here. Morrowind would have been 2002. So, make of that what you will. But yeah, we'll see. I was even net positive about Fallout 4, and Fallout 4 pissed me off so hard. It was still a net positive, in my opinion. And I get flack for that opinion, too. I just think Fallout 4 shouldn't have been an open world game. No, Silver Cookie. I played all of the games I just mentioned at launch. Are you sure, Felderis? Why did it piss me off? A lot of reasons. Mostly the leveling system in Fallout 4 is probably the biggest thing that pissed me off. I hate it. I actively hate it. Even when I understood it, I still hated it. <laughs> Stupid goddamn system. <sighs> oh, I, f I feel you, Revan. I mean, when I first went to the giant ant quest, which is like the first quest I run into, that got to me. Holy crap. <laughs> Stupid. 
Sturgis? Tell her. Uh, anyways, we're getting a little off topic. We're, we're kind of done with this topic. Um, I do actually have a Tumblr question to share with you guys. Just one. Oh, God. I've had four questions since I since last night. What's a fan cast, guys? That's not the question. I've been asked something about fan casting. I don't know what that means. I guess I'll get a timestamp here really quick. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not familiar with the phrase. A fan run podcast? I don't actually understand that. Um, when you choose who should be in a movie role oh okay well that would make sense because the specific question is can you do a fan cast of a video game you'd like to see to be seen adapted so they're probably asking who what I would put in the roles then okay that makes more sense I'll look into that later that's not the question I'm asking you guys the question I'm asking you guys is someone from is this insane horribly evil question here um, because I thought this would be a cool one to toss at you guys anybody have any interest in history other than me obviously other than the snowy world. Dominated by the Imperial symbol. <laughs> so the question is, you have the ability to capture real live factual footage of up to three events in history. Obviously you cannot alter them in any way. Basically a time viewer. So which three events would you go for? Cuban Missile Crisis. Okay. Yeah, I'm with that. <laughs> There's a lot of interesting things about that one. On all sides. In fact, only relatively recently, within the last several years, we've actually had some books declassified, which have shed new in insight into that whole situation. The Assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand. Yeah, that's another big one. Another one we yeah, have some interesting information on. The Age of Christ. I'm with that. Definitely. There's a lot that could be said about that. The Crusades. Which Crusades? Hazardous. Um, it just says history, Micromano, so history. Battle of Trafalgar. I'm with that. Stonehenge. The crafting of it, I would assume. See if King Arthur existed. <laughs> I'm with that. The Roman Empire. Which one? Uh, the Renaissance. The Middle Ages. Too, too broad. Specific event. Dinosaur Extinction Impact. I'm with it. The Assassination of Caesar. I'm with it. The Ides of March. With that one, too. The building of the Great Pyramid, I assume you mean the first one. Hello, Karoro. World War II, <laughs> probably too big. Alexander the Great's death, the fall of Constantinople. Uh, the creation of the universe. The burning of Alexandria. Ooh, I don't think I could watch that. The Third Crusades, okay. Um, Easter Rising, Alexander the Great's final days, again. Socrates' trial, that would be interesting. Uh, who was the first in America? The French Revolution. The Reformation, yeah. The, the making of the Great Wall of China. And there's another one for the burning of Alexandria. The sealing of the Magna Carta. The Battle of Troy. Building of the Pyramids and the Sphinx. The sinking of the Wassa. The last sack of Rome. Which one? Um, <laughs> one each of EA's, Konami's, and Activision's annual meetings. We, we know everything. Hello, Ethel. Um, the Battle of Kadesh versus the Hittites. Yeah, that would be very interesting. The, Kung, the Tunguska event. Oh, yeah. The Bronze Age Collapse. Now, I'd, that's actually my first pick, by the way. I'm, I'm, I was waiting for someone to say that. Because for those of you who don't, aren't aware, we don't know exactly what happened with the Bronze Age Collapse. We still don't know to this very day. So that would be like a, ah, oh, kind of a thing. There's, there's several we don't knows in history, and that's a big one for me personally. I've been studying that since I was a kid. Seriously. So, that's my first pick. Um, the building of the, I can't pronounce that. Tenno Titlin? Custard's Last Stand. Yeah. The founding of the Holy Roman... The second, excuse me, founding of the Holy Roman Order. The Battle of Vienna. The Burning of Alexandria. You guys really want to watch Alexandria burn, don't you? 
The look on El Michelangelo's face when he finishes the Statue of David. The Kennedy assassination. That would be an interesting one. Uh, Martin Luther. Yep, I'm with it. Uh, what's the Bronze Age collapse? It's when the Bronze Age collapsed. <laughs> We're not really sure 100%. Like, the Bronze Age, to take a tight quick aside here, the Bronze Age... Uh, was an era which was relatively advanced and relatively decently civilized and relatively awesome. And then for reasons that we are still not sure of, just society on a universal circumstance collapsed. Like, few nations even survived the collapse. And everything was just shoved way back down into a lengthy dark age. It took centuries for people to even get close to where they were. And we're not sure why. <laughs> It just happened. The forging of the first blade. That'd be interesting. <laughs> That's true, Max time. I was going to say, which time, Inquisitor? China's fallen apart several times. The invasion of Khan. Genghis Khan, yeah. Osama bin Laden being killed. Sure, I'm with it. The discovery of fire. That would be interesting. The invention of the wheel. The Battle of cro -Magnon. The nuclear explosion as viewed from the ground in Japan. Now that's an interesting choice. Because we have loads upon loads upon loads of information on what happened after, but obviously kind of lack the ability to see what happened during. And with a time viewer, we could literally see from the ground level what happened at Hiroshima and... Uh, Nagasaki. Or... Is that the right... Oh, God, I actually don't remember. I know Hiroshima. I don't remember the other town. Ah, the footage of Gobleki Tepe. That would be interesting. Also, Go Arsenal. Um, unrelated. The Unification War during the Sengoku Jidai period. Ah, oh, except I just repeated myself. Sengoku Jidai means period. But yes, the unific Unification War in the Sengoku period would be awesome. Rasputin's murder. It was Nagasaki, I was right. Okay. Queen's performance at Lailu. And there's a movie about that, which is incredibly unfactual. It's a new word, I just made it up. The Bronze Age Collapse, documenting the type of opiate plant the Ionic philosophers used, and the building of the pyramids. I have to admit, there's a lot of Egyptian history I would love to look into if I had a time viewer. It, the biggest problem for me would be finding a specific point in... Uh, in Egyptian history, like a specific event, you know. The 1970 World Cup Final. <laughs> There's another one for the assassination of Caesar. The American Civil War. I don't think I want to see that. I've studied the American Civil War. It was... It's, it's fascinating. From a strategic and logistic perspective, it was a turning point in warfare. In my opinion, the American Civil War was something that literally changed warfare from one era to the next. And it's something that had a great impact on Europe as well, and, and led into World War One. But that was a mess of a war. Oh my god. Roanoke, that's another good one. The CIA agents coup in 1953 in Iran. Iran, excuse me. Yeah. Their successful human hunt. The divide of the Alexandrian, Alexandrian Empire. The moment where Pharaoh declared ancient Egypt to be monotheist. Yeah. For the sake of fantasy, let's just assume that this time viewer is like, you walk into a holodeck and you're there viewing, and none of them can see you or interact with you, and it, they're just holograms, but you're watching the events live, you know, there, right? And you can fast forward or rewind or whatever and change your viewpoint. Like, <laughs> right? Something like that. Ah, the Scapa flow infiltration by the U-boat. The Aristotle and Plato dialogues. The moon landing. I was actually thinking about that one for my second one. I know that sounds so stupid because we literally have footage of the moon landing, but we don't really, right? I mean, <laughs> it would be awesome to just actually be there and see people walking on the moon. You know, there's just something about that. The extinction of the dinosaurs. The Battle of Somme. Yeah. Or Somme, I don't know how to pronounce that. Seeing if Atlantis actually existed. 
the origin of the universe. Yeah. I mean, several people earlier said Christ. I'm, I'm with that because there's so many answers that could be said there that humans probably are not ready for. <laughs> no, don't want to get into that too much, but... <sighs> Battle of Hastings, 1066. Yeah, that's another good one. Napoleon's retreat from Russia. Ah, it's, it's just it's just like two months of... Ah. <laughs> ah, the Battle of Cannae. I th actually thought about that one too, admittedly. They spoke off. No! Hitler's suicide. That would be interesting. That's true. This is just one person knowing the truth. Ah, the Battle of Thermopylae, Hazardous. Sahara before becoming a desert. I admit that's very interesting, too. Ah, the Christian Schism in 1100s. That, the, uh, uh... What's it called? The Something Council. I can't think of the term of it, but... The, uh, history, Colgram. Just history. Nicaea, that's it. The Council of Nicaea. Um, let's assume that for the sake of this, because it just said footage, let's assume that this is pure visual. You can't use, you, you can't like get data of how many atoms are in a thing or the exact level of radiation in a thing, whatever. You don't have a scanner. All you get is visual and audio footage of an event. That's why I made the, the holodeck comparison. The first religion ever. That would probably be going back a long time at that point. Theoretically, of course, we don't know. Seeing the actual Buddha. The original Buddha. Pope Urban's call to the First Crusade. Yeah. No translation? Nope. <laughs> no translation. We'll have to work that out on our own. Yeah, you see why I wanted to ask you guys this question. Why I wanted to toss this one on the stream. Because there's so much. Nailing it down to three is kind of cruel, isn't it? The first death on Earth. Okay, you see that amoeba? Okay, it just died. Yes, yeah, okay, so in order to get translation, what you have to do is you have to buy translation boxes, okay? Now, each of these contain one word from one language. Now, you can get duplicates, but it's okay. If you get a duplicate, you get translation points, like five. And if you could spend 2,000 translation points, you can just buy a word that you need. You know, the more I ask, the more I talk about loot boxes, the less they make sense to me. Like, I'm, I'm dead serious about that statement. Anyways... <clears throat> uh, kind of no, Spokov, is the answer. But also kind of yes. Basically, it's not part of the Imperium in any way that matters. Let's put it that way. The Roswell incident. That would be a very interesting question. That's a good one. I like that shadow machine. Excuse me. Sargon of Akkad. Yeah. Ah, the formula of Greek fire. Another one of those lost things. I gotta be honest, I'm still... Watergate, the invention of the phone. I'm still torn on my, my number two and my number three. The, the, the fall of the bronze, the collapse of the bronze age is just a really big one for me. I'm not kidding when I say I've been studying it since I was a kid. I came across a random reference in a book I was reading about the bronze age collapse. And this was when I was like... Think about that for a second. I would have been seven when I came across this. And I was just like, well, what happened? So I started looking into it. And the answer was, uh. <laughs> and in fact, we now have more information about the Bronze Age collapse than we did then. Like, when I was reading into it, the big theory was that iron came to the Bronze Age and crushed it. That has basically been disproven by now's time. Ah, the fall of the Berlin Wall. I have seen that, though. <laughs> when I was a kid. 
Ah, yes, Life of Tesla. That's another interesting one. Did he actually invent a death ray? Take some notes here. There we go. Um, what's his name? Thermistocles? Is that his name? I can't think of his name. Greek dude. <laughs> the fall of the Roman Empire. The final days of the Roman Empire. Iron Man destroyed Bronze Man. That was the rules. You know, he, he was like, I challenge you. And Bronze Man was like, all right, I'm ready. The construction of the first ship. Uh, yes, it is, Iser Master. The Athenian Plague, yeah. Also, the exact day when I took power, which technically is in my future, but in your past, it's, you know how time travel works. It was a long time ago, though. Hitler's childhood. <laughs> What's funny is we actually have several accounts, which may or may not be factual, that Hitler was always kind of a prat, even when he was serving in the German army in World War I. The sinking of the Titanic. I don't think I'd want to see that, to be completely honest. Creation of the first words and language. Yeah, that would be interesting. The Roswell, yep. Yeah, we've mentioned Roswell. Lisbon. Yeah, the Lisbon quake. Watching the dark times. He was Austrian, yes. He was born in Austria. Born of Austria. Let's make that slightly more accurate. The Krakatoa eruption in the 1870s, yeah. Just watch the movie. So there's this guy named Jack. And then a lot of people died. Horrible, horrible deaths. Screaming agony. <sighs> Pompeii. You cannot go to the future. It has to be history, past. Just <laughs> I'm sorry, Huthor. I'm sorry. That I, I like that one. What about the Nazi occupation of France? Oof. We do have a lot of information about that one, too. I don't remember the, which siege that is a boring but I think I know the one you're talking about. Watching Tolkien, or Tolkien, write The Lord of the Rings and the Cimmerillion, that would be interesting. Yeah, I gotta be honest, uh, I'm, so someone asked what my other two picks were. I gotta be blunt, I'm not sure yet. The first one really is easy, the Bronze Age Collapse, boom, done. <sighs> Past that? Hmm, I'm not sure. I'm really not. Now, <laughs> if we were able to capture footage, we could obviously watch it repeatedly, right? Which means we could take notes on stuff. Which means we could probably, if I'm being honest, I would probably try to pick points of culture and history that have been lost and try to restore them. So obviously I'd, I'd pick the Doctor Who missing episodes. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. You get the idea. The writing of the Declaration of Independence. Watching her own birth. I mean, you could do that if you really want to. I don't think I want to see my mother giving birth to me. Call me a weirdo. Birth is already gross enough. Hey, I gotta buy another capture box. It's a different type of box, which uses a different currency. <laughs> Anyways, we've gotten lots and lots of answers here. I think that's good enough. Uh, let's go ahead and chop off the local recording.